Live from Houston, Texas, is another exciting Ginger Snap lesson on Wednesday, 7.30 Central Time with Ginger Cook. Ginger! Hi, John. Okay. Hi, everybody. If uh, you are new to an experience of doing a live show with me, I'm Ginger Cook. I'm an acrylic artist. I teach acrylic uh, uh, fine art painting here on our channel. And even if you've never painted uh, with acrylics before, I think you're going to find that I explain things really easily. I mean, just really easily. And so how we're going to, what we're going to be doing tonight is we're going to be doing what we call a ginger snap. In other words, sometimes, at, for instance, on our regular website, our uh, members of gingercooklive.gallery, these are our monthly subscribers, every week they get a new lesson. And we have over 250 lessons that we've accumulated over the last year that uh, they have access to. And with so many lessons, sometimes people even forget about ones. Sometimes things that kind of, oh gosh, I'm so excited about the new stuff, I forget about some of the old stuff. So I wanted to bring about our pansy basket, which I really like. And I thought tonight we would just talk about how to paint pansies. The pansy basket consists of a whole basket full of pansies. John's going to show that to you in a moment. Yeah, let me show and, that to you right now. And and then and and uh, and and this fine woven basket. Do you see that? Well, what we're going to focus on now is just how you might paint pansies. And so I was sort of searching the internet for pansies, something I could show you, you know, in this time period. And I came across this painting. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. It was done in the late 1800s by a artist named Paul Gabriel, and um, he was a Dutch artist, and the sad thing about Paul was that even though he was, I think, extremely talented, he never really made it successfully, uh, in, the, in other words, really wasn't feeding himself as an artist, and he, you know, he wasn't well known or recognized, but I think he's very good, and so I'm gonna, we're gonna just sort of do his painting tonight in conjunction with how you might do a pansy if you want to come over to our website and tackle our pansy basket. And I think that's kind of fun, and I want to introduce you guys to John uh, a little. He is our, our moderator. He's also the other half and business partner in gingercooklive.gallery. He's the guy that answers your emails when you've lost your password, you can't sign on. In fact, we recently, John, I think this is a good thing to address. A couple of our members were, you know, everybody's watching stuff on iPads and, you know, phones and all kinds of devices, and we have to have every one of those so we can see what you're going through. And John is such a... He's a genius with this stuff, and so it came about, one of our members was saying that she couldn't chat. In other words, when she got on, she was watching this on the iChat, she wanted to participate in the chat. In fact, it's so funny, I said, well, if you have a question, you know, I'll tell you what, you're one of my members, I'll, I'll phone you, give me your phone number, I will phone you and answer personally any question you have. And she said, no, no, she says, I want to experience the chat with everybody else. And so, John, how did you solve that for her? Well, today I went on my, she had an iPad, and you have to use the YouTube app, the official YouTube app. You can't go to it with the browser. It has to be the app. And once you have the app, you launch it, you get to our site, in the very lower right corner, it says live chat, a little bar down there. You click that, and that will open up the live chat area. What do you mean our site? What do you mean? Uh, our, our live YouTube. Okay. The, yeah. Okay. This is just you. for the YouTube. So you got to go the to the live, Ginger Cook live YouTube event, right? Yep. Or it could be anybody's live YouTube event. You got to go to somebody's live YouTube event. Preferably, right. you're coming to mine, but anybody else's. You might be going to my daughter's. But if you want to chat, you and you're on an iPad, you got to do that. See? You have to be using the app. You have to be using no the messing around, people. YouTube app. Well, yep. that's good to know. You know, it's so funny about stuff like that. Um, this has been sort of a day for me. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my day as we're speaking. I got up uh, really early, about 4 to answer in the morning to answer questions uh, from our uh, group that mails me in their pictures as their art coach. So I did that for a couple hours this morning, and then I had an appointment with the ophthalmologist. And um, while we're putting some paint out and stuff, first off, I'm going to tell you this story because it's kind of good. You see we're going to be doing these pansies. Now, yesterday, uh, uh, gosh, was it yesterday? We painted that fun dog. Remember that Toulouse-Lautrec uh, dog? Uh, Henry, Henry. Toulouse Lautrec. I, I kept thinking his name was Toulouse, but it's actually Henry. <laughs> and everybody else did too. I'm sorry, it wasn't just me. Anyway, Henry's dog. And I did this background kind of as a quick example to show you how to do a background. And, it, and I thought, man, I, there's no sense in wasting that. I can make this work. Okay. So basically, this is just a dark purple background with some blue in it. Uh, but I think if you just started with the dark purple background, you'd be okay. Okay and then and have it dry and then what I want to do is I'm going to 
uh, take some chalk and I'm going to uh, chalk in these pansies. Now I want you to think about the shape for a minute of this. Uh, pansies, um, you, people think they're round, but you see he, they're really um, almost square with the leaf. You know what I mean? This is, all, well, it's almost heart shape, isn't it? And so I want, to, I, want to, I want a big one in here. I'm just going to, I want to kind of exaggerate this. I'm going to put one in here kind of like this. I've got a, you know, small one down here. I've got something up here, almost the sh like a butterfly, really. This looks like a butterfly. Then, uh, so this is our biggest one. So let's, let's, now that I've decided that's where this is going, it's got kind of this half circle. And then, you know, you've got a pansy that's something like this. I mean, it's almost like Mickey Mouse ears, all right? And then they've got another one coming over here. That's how he did it. We're going to do the same thing here, kind of like this, and come down like that, just uh, pretty loose here. Here's a circle, and here's a little one up here. And then you've got this other one here that overlaps that, okay? And then you've got this one off of here that's kind of, you're seeing it almost like a flying saucer. You don't see much of that. He's got some little red one here. We may or may not do it. Okay, so basically, that's our shape. Now, what you need to know first is that um, yellow only paints over white in acrylics. Um, other, other stuff, other, I'm not going to talk about other mediums, acrylics. So basically, we're going to have to paint these uh, pansies white first. And so the colors I'm using are white, mixing white. I've got some um, Southern Ocean Blue. If you don't have that, use Thalo uh, Green or Thalo Blue, um, Cad Yellow Medium, Yellow Oxide, Ultramarine Blue, a Dosney Purple, Burnt Umber, and Burnt Sienna, and Cad Red Medium. And this was left over from another palette. This has been sitting for two days under a little plastic dome with the lid. I mean, really, that's all it was, and we're going to keep that. So while we're painting that, I'm going to tell you, when I'm kind of drawing that in, I'm going to just uh, paint that in with the, the white, and I'll reshape it as I go. Here's my titanium, and I'm going to look at this. And I, I know, for instance, of what I want. I want this big, uh, you know, white one down here like that, okay? And then I'm going to come up here like this. I'm using a little angle brush. This happens to be, it's, I usually I have a, a ruby satin silver, but I happen to grab a little angle Simply Simmons brush. I, if you haven't tried an angle brush, they are the best. And then I, we've got some little uh, flower coming off like this, okay? And then back here we've got another flower. See, it's, it's pretty loose. I mean, I just sort of, this one's coming up about like that. Okay, so there we go. I mean, that's about, that's pretty easy, right? And then we've got another one coming over here like this. This is this kind of shaped uh, petal like that. That's very pretty. And then it's got a little funny little leaf here. And uh, again, we're just doing white because uh, we're going to do a lot of different layers of colors. That's the secret with painting pansies. So the, how I ended up at the ophthalmologist, you guys, was that John and I were walking last summer, back when it was really nice, we were walking around the neighborhood, and it happened to be evening, and I could see the moon, and I said, man, you know what I love tonight is I love all those pretty rainbow colors around the moon. He said, what rainbow colors? I said, you know, those nice ones up there. He says, I don't see any rainbow colors. And I'm going, well, of course there are. Really, look closer. You'll see them. And, and says, I look closer, I didn't see him. He didn't see him, and I'm going, well, you know, some of us are artists, we see more colors than others. He says, I don't think so. I think there's something off with your eyes. There's nothing wrong with my eyes. I just think you're not seeing the colors. And, of course, he wasn't. So he says, you need to get your eyes checked. I said, oh, no, they're fine, just check them. So we went, you know, so then forthwith we went to find, you know, the op ophthalmologist in town. Everybody recommended, and it took, like, months to get in, okay? So I got to see him this morning. Well, I saw the office. You don't just see him. Now, it's a sort of an interesting experience because um, I did kind of appreciate the fact they did take Medicare. That was nice. You know, so some, some patients didn't. Okay, so, you know, there's an extra 30 minutes while they fill out the paperwork. And then the first person I met was a very nice gal, very sweet. And um, so, you know, she uh, asked all the questions. And, you know, you put your chin on that machine. And they do some different stuff. And can you read these letters? And I'm sorry, I thought the D and the O were very similar. I mean, anybody could mistake the D and the O because the, the D, I mean, almost the same, really, honestly, because I, I, you know, took lettering courses and I thought their D was very tricky. Really, I did, but that's okay. I mean, I went with it. But now this is what I got to tell you. This makes me laugh even thinking about it. So do you remember, I mean, I've been there, I was there like four years ago, 
So I've been down through that razzmatazz with those machines, okay, those eye machines, okay, when you go to those expensive ophthalmologists and they have all the equipment. It was the same place. But so what she does is she, um, she has like this spoon. I swear to God, she has a spoon and she hands it to me. She says, hold this over your eye. It kind of is shaped like this, okay? Hold this over your eye, but it's a wooden spoon. And then she's sitting there. Are, are you ready to And then she okay, says, Wait, 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 wait. Go back. Camera didn't switch to the right one. Okay, so she's. I'm holding the spoon over my eye, and she's up in front of me going, Can you see these fingers? Can you see these fingers? How about these fingers? How, how about these fingers? And so she's doing this with the fingers. I mean, I, I'm not kidding. And I'm going, Yeah, I can see them. And then she says, Switch eyes. How about this finger? How about this finger? And I'm thinking, What about the little dot machine? What happened to that? That's <laughs> what I remember. The little What's dot. The little dot machine. What is this? I mean, you can do your own eye test at home. Have somebody just wait at you. Honestly. And then the guy comes in, the main doctor, and he starts saying, well, it looks like you have um, uh, cataracts and, um, and we're going to have to have an operation. I said, honestly, really? I mean, just, <laughs> um, I'm sorry. <laughs> just this part. We, we were howling at this at dinner because the more I thought about it, the weirder this got, you know. Hi, can you, how about this one here? How about this, how about this one? You know, um, <laughs> just very strange. Oh, I mean, it's kind strange. of funny. So anyway, um, in February, I'll be having um, some um, eye surgery. Uh, apparently, it's a very s simple thing. And um, um, so I asked him if, uh, you know, Medicare covered. He's so funny. He says, well, they cover some of it. I don't know what your plan in is at the girls in the office. You know, he was all excited about doing the surgery. And um a part of me wants to run and get a second opinion, but I think we're going to go do it only because of this. Hi, can, about the, can you see this? Can you see this fingers? And, and there was no little red dot machine. You know the one I'm talking about where you put your eye in the machine and you try to see if, where the little dots are. But in any event... Um, low tech that, always that wins. Low tech always wins. And apparently uh, seeing rainbows around the moon is not a sign of a, a very artistic ability or some sort of super art And talent. I rest my case. It is some sort of eye generation thing. And, you know, so if, if you, like me, are seeing uh, rainbows, uh, which I, I, you know, look out for the unicorns and then uh, maybe see an eye doctor, okay? So while we're letting these dry, okay, this is, uh, this is going to dry, we're going to do some fun stuff with this. Now, I want you to see the background. I mean, that's, I mean, I thought that was hilarious, you know, with the, hi, can you see me? Hello. <laughs> So, all right, so let's take, let's make some green, green stuff. Now we're going to switch brushes and I'm going to take a ruby satin silver bright brush and I'm going to just uh, kind of go into my background a little bit, wet the brush. And now I'm doing that because this paint's getting kind of old, but you know, we like to recycle here. So here's a little um, ultramarine blue and a little bit of yellow. And I've got this sort of dark green color. All right, and maybe I'll put a little bit of purple with it. There we go. And I'm just going to come around here like this and kind of wake this background up because I've got this dark background. So this little ultramarine blue, a little bit of yellow. I'm going to wake it up, maybe put a little bit more yellow in here and just suggest some plant growth without doing anything. Isn't this kind of cle clever kind of wake this up? So anyway, that was the uh, John. Uh, certainly, you were certainly right. Apparently, that just wasn't the thing. It was very sad to see that. Okay, so we're going to come around here like that. Now, now we're going to take, I'm using a little Southern Ocean and some blue, because that's kind of a light green and maybe a little bit of white even. Ooh, that's pretty. Kind of, can you see my palette there? Yes, we can. And, <coughs> oh, sorry, I'm going to. Almost like we know what we're doing. Going to tap in. This is all wet and wiggly, because remember, he was an oil painter, so everything he did was wet. So we're just going to put all this out of focus, and maybe let's see if we can get a little, um, plant going like this out this way just something like that the little yellow do, 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 just kind of almost straight down like this there like that that's pretty good and up here let's see let's put a little dark blue with it the ultramarine blue being your um uh <coughs> your um uh, army green colors okay now i'm going to come back in here let's do the same thing let's just wake it up down here too as long as we're off playing with the canvas here. And we'll kind of, we can come in here and kind of correct these pansies later. We know what the colors are. Let's see, how about a little blue, maybe a little bit of cad red medium. Let's get a little of those colors. 
uh, you can save your paint. I think the purpose of this was to show you can save your paint. We're kind of darkening this up down here with a little purple cad red medium over some of this darker color. And we'll do the same thing. You know, we're going pretty fast here because it's going to be drying pretty quick under the lights. But the, this should be fine. This should not be a big deal. Here, let's come in here like that. Uh, I came home and my eyes were really dilated. And I thought, well, these people will think I'm on drugs if I don't tell them what happened to the, at the eye doctor, you know. Um, so anyway, uh, that's, that was my eye doctor experience. Now I'm going to do some of that Southern Ocean Blue yellow business with a little bit of white. I don't want to come under here like this. Let me just get some more of that. Now you could use a turquoise blue, phthalo blue, turquoise blue, something in here like that. And I want to weave in some pretty colors. What made this sort of, what made this a pretty uh, picture was this sort of, these sort of abstract leaves. And you see how much paint I've got kind of globbed on here on the brush. And so I'm just dropping it off. And someone says, how do you keep your paint from having ridges? Hey, you guys, I want ridges. I want ridges on this stuff. I'm going out of my way to create ridges like that. I'm going to come up here into my uh, into my colors, and here's a little bit of um, yellow oxide, and I, I want some ridges. Uh, let's see, what else can I do? Maybe down in here, just barely touch it with the side of my brush, wiggle it real fast, create some sort of, oh, that's pretty. Notice I'm not trying to do it exactly like his, but I thought his background was really just a delightful. So anyway, that's what we're doing. Kind of keeping it dark up here like this. Now, and I think he had a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow, I think. So maybe some, there was some sort of red stuff going on down here too, see? I didn't clean the brush. I'm just going to get more yellow. Anyway, so next time you want to do an eye exam at home, I just showed you how, right? <laughs> if you can't see your friend's fingers, then... For, Hop off to the eye doctor, but I've saved you like some money, right? Yeah, other than that, you're good to go. Well, you're good. Yeah, because apparently that's all there is. You don't need any fancy equipment here. You can just jump around with some of the hands and a spoon, and you're you're okay. You know. Uh, let's see, a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow, like that. Cadmium medium. There we go. Like that. See what happens here. Now, just see, I've added a little bit of color in here, like that, indicating that might be something here. And what do I got up here? Maybe I could do that here. I could e even indicate this. Uh, there's a pansy up here. Let's put a little white with it. Ooh, that's pretty. Let's, uh, here's, remember we said we had a little pansy here. We'll make it kind of an off-white pansy off here to the side. And uh, there was something over here, too. And you know the color we want. And you're going, no, what? we didn't put it out. Which we need a little magenta. There's definitely some magenta in this. So we're going to take a little white and magenta and... Um, Tap some of that in there too, like that. Just tap it in when you're kind of doing wet on wet. Here's a little pansy kind of tucked back in here to this flower. Okay. Thank you, so, Marty, for noticing. The camera is not moving. We have solved that problem. <coughs> oh, we have. It's just John's been uh, really working at that. We um, changed some stuff and we, we've been working at that, which is kind of good. So you can see now that, you know, from this, we've just leave that brush in the water there. We've got. Um, is this uh, a you know, we've painting? sort of outlined some stuff that we can work with now. All right, now I've got some sort of little, let's see, I'm going to move this all like this so you can kind of see the picture. I've got some. Well, they have a picture in a picture. Oh, they do? All right, so I'm going to come down here like this. That is a real painting. The, the, the photo that you guys are seeing on the screen is the actual painting that was done in the 1800s. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to come down here like this, maybe with a little white, and um, just tap this, this, um, Tap it on, see, because everything's kind of wet, so I'm not drawing it on it. Tapping on these roots that are coming down here from this. Don't want like that, something like that. Tapping that on. And then there's some <laughs> sort of little uh, pink sort of stuff that's going on here. I'm just going to tap that on here, too. It's just something, I don't know, like that. That's pretty. And let's see, what's this going on here? Okay, so I'm going to take a little white now and kind of outline this like that okay now i'll pinch the brush and then just uh this is a sneaky way to do <coughs> sorry it's a little thin white line pansies are fun to do they a lot of them involve layers we're going to put some more white back in this one and then we're going to have to dry something because i'm doing this pretty thick i'm going to put a little white back in this one and back over in here like this 
Okay, so there's a couple different ways to do it, but we're kind of doing that. And uh, <coughs> let's see, I've got, well, let's see, I'm going to say I've, we've got something going on here. This green isn't dry yet, so if we're going to tap some yellow here like this. I have to tap it. I can't brush it because I'll, I'll dig down into the flower, but I can tap it, okay, and then I can sort of tap a, a stem like that, see? So, I mean, that's just a little trick you can do. You can, if you, when in doubt, you know, you can tap it. Oh, the artist. Hold on a second. Dry, okay. You want to know the artist's name again? Okay. Do you remember it off the top of your head? It's Paul Gabriel? Uh, yeah, 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 Paul uh, uh, Gabriel. That was his name. Ginger, you're not getting sick, are you? Uh, no, I just, um, no. I'm not getting sick. <laughs> There's just, I'm not. They're concerned. Well, I appreciate it. No, I'm not getting sick, but, um. Uh, no, not all right. So I'm going to do something real dark here with some blue. Let's put out some phthalo blue. I say that I'm not going to put out any more of the Southern Ocean. I need some real phthalo blue here, and because uh, that's a, that makes a really nice, uh, super nice bright green with a little yellow, cad yellow medium, and then you put a little bit of dark blue in it, like ultramarine blue, and you get a pretty dark green. And we need a, we need some dark green between these two pansies like this. That's why I okay. try not to type too much. They can okay. hear me typing. All right, so then we're going to come in here like that and just kind of cut in here like that. And let's see, anything over here? Yeah, that's pretty. How about a little bit of white with this? Yeah, I like that. There was a little bit of white in here. That's pretty. I mean, this was all just sort of kind of blushed in here. Ooh, that's pretty. This is where you get part of the paint and, and it's on part of your brush and you... So it's kind of, you're leaving some, you know, marks like that. This is nice. And what's cool about doing this, is this dry, is that um, I can see it on a vid and screen right in front of me. I can see what I'm painting. And that really helps me. All right. That really, really helps me see what, what's going on here. Now, um, if I wanted to paint this, which I do, want to paint this, uh, that's cad yellow light. Where did, where did we put cad yellow medium? And you're going, I don't know. Where, did, where would that have gone? Cad yellow light. Ah, cad yellow medium. Let's go for that. All right, I'm going to just start a new place on the canvas. There you go, a little cad yellow medium. Actually, I like cad yellow light. We have it out. Maybe we should use it. Uh, did you know you can't make cad yellow light? You can't add white to cad yellow medium and make cad yellow light. Um, you just can't. So if you need a kind of a soft light yellow, yellow is one of those primary colors, red, yellow, blue. So if you're going to buy some extra colors, buy yellows, some... Uh, there's, I would say own yellows, you know, you'll see me mostly do, um, here's a little bit of cad yellow um, light here. We're going to come over this, this pansy and I'm going to add a little bit of, let's see if I can wake up this mixing white. Mostly that just sort of dried out there. Really wasn't anything to that, was there? Huh. Well, okay, fine. Um, I've got some mixing white. I brought it over here and stuck it in the bin. I remember you saw me do it, right? Ah, here it is. Mixing white is a translucent white and it's a transparent. All right, so I'm going to put a lot of that there and I'm going to mix that with this color. All right, so I'm going to see now let's try a little cad yellow medium with it. See the difference? See, it's kind of a brighter yellow. So you've got the sort of the mixing white on the on the edge here. And we're going to just start with the yellow pansy. All right. Now, yellow is one of those colors that is opposite, you know, that can be a little bit overwhelming. So what you can do is you can, let's get a little more purple over here where our dazzling purple is. What brush are you using again right now? This is a ruby satin silver angle. Okay. Uh, you can use a tiny bit, like I'm taking, talking about, like next to nothing, tiny bit of a purple. And if you add it to your yellow, it tones it down just a bit. It makes it just slightly, just a little bit, a little, it kind of grays it a bit. And sometimes... The, the yellow can be overwhelming. Here's a little bit of titanium white. Now I'll show you what the difference is when you add that. What do you think about a lemon yellow substitute for the cad yellow light? Um, well, try it. I mean, you know what I mean? You can try, you know, it's a yellow pansy, and there's so many different shades of pansies that I don't think you'd be wrong. Here's the thing. You can get away with a lot. And flowers are one of the few things that can go on straight from the tube. Did you guys know that? Mostly you mix everything, but flowers can go on straight from the tube. So we're going to say... Here's some yellow coming down here like that. 
and um, and then if you'll recall, if you look here on this edge here, there's a little tiny bit of um, uh, kind of almost like a magenta color that's almost staining the edge. Do you see that? And so we're going to just uh, do that here, like that. And then pinch the brush and then just sort of melt that in while it's still wet. See on this edge? And perhaps do a little shadow of that right in here like that. Okay. Pinch the brush. Shove it back there. There you go. And then we're going to take a little bit of that magenta color and maybe some cad red medium, which I'm going to put some more out of because we sort of trash that too. I just hate to waste paint, so we're using up the old stuff. And uh, maybe a little bit of magenta and a little bit of the yellow. And uh, let's come over here like this on this one and add that color right there. Okay. See, that's pretty. Now I'm pinching the brush. This is still wet. Um, wet it now. Come back, pinch it. Oops, I had green on there. I've got to clean the brush completely if you're going to do that. I think that probably should have cleaned the water too, John, from earlier in the day. All right. So here's our. Uh, we're sort of giving it a little bit of a shadow in here to this. Do you see this? I can under here on this, on this petal. We're kind of doing a little shadow. That's coming off of this petal like that. And I think there's a little bit of this color right here and maybe up in here. So that's our first layer of this pansy. And while this is um, this is drying, we'll fool around with this one. So back to the yellow and the we, white. We, we have a question for you. Yeah, yeah, sure. Why do you say flowers can go straight from the tube? I don't mixing? know. I'm, uh, just as I, when I was in art school and I was learning these things, that flowers are, are very bright colors and you, they were one of, one of the few things that I was, you know, that you can, you don't really, they're really bright, right? And so when you're painting flowers, you can almost do pure colors, and you can't own really enough um, uh, reds and different reds and whites and stuff for that. Okay, so here, here's some. Um, That's a three eighths uh, angle you're using, right? Yeah, this three eighths inch angle. Uh, well, isn't it a quarter inch? I think. Do you know what number it is? It's a three. Th um, it's a quarter inch angle, I oh, think. Quarter inch. And if you like these brushes, um, we have. Uh, we're very grateful to these the brush guys who keep them on. Of their site. Now there's a little bit of this color still on my brush. You see there? So all I have to do, once I found it, this little bit of this orange color, see how I, while this is still wet, I'm just at tapping a bit of that in. Yeah, next time you uh, pinch your brush, can you uh, hold it up underneath the... Hold yeah. it up. I'm yeah. doing this all the time. All the time. Just doing this You're, you're actually really squeezing it very hard too, I'm squeezing you? it hard. I don't rinse it. I just uh, squeeze it. I don't rinse it. For and what you're doing is you're packing the paint inside the bristles. Yes, and, and more than that, I'm sort of wiping off the excess. Right. And pushing it in there like that. So I'm packing it in there. This is this kind of little shading along here like that. Okay. And then what do we got going on over here? Well, here's some mixing white in this. Uh, this is a pretty light pansy. This is coat number two. I need some more titanium. Titanium. Ah. All right, let's put out, we're going to do it over this corner. We're going to put out some titanium white because we need to, to add that to this. This is second layer of titanium. And just a tight, yet tiny bit of a yellow tint to this, okay, on this pansy. I want just a tiny bit of a yellow tint. And it will do well because it's been sitting up here over this dried white. You see? Now you see how we're this, this painting is coming together? And we really haven't had to do anything yet, right? Now we can come up here because this is dried enough and maybe with a little bit of yellow right up here like that bright yellow like that tap that on see there look at that isn't that pretty and then I think there was something here okay and then as long as I'm doing that see I go around all the time it's like doing a puzzle when you see a picture like this it's like doing a, a puzzle only instead of having to sit there for hours and try and find the pieces on the table you make them you make the pieces that's a thought now that's a pretty color maybe I could put some of that over here See, in this, um, where else could I put it? Could I put a little of that color up in here? Maybe with a little more magenta, all right? So maybe I want that color up in this flower. That's a little darker than I wanted it, so I'll put a little white. Maybe put some of this color over here. Indicate some sort of pansy. <clears throat> okay, so you see how it's kind, of, it's kind of coming along. Now, let's see, what could we do with um, this one's drying? What can we do with this? Oh. Well, let's take a little ultramarine blue and a little white. OK, 
kind of mix that over here because I need a clean space to mix it. See what I'm doing mixing it? Now I'm going to come over on this pansy, get some more white, and I'm going to give this one sort of a blue tint right in here like that. This one is overlapping that one like that, and it's going to take a little bit of magenta, tiny bit of dodging purple, a little bit of white. Okay, now, all right, all the brush strokes are going toward the center. Your brush strokes are like a record, um, you know, you know, grooves in a record, how your brush strokes act, and, and R is going to make the difference. You see this, the outside edge of this pansy? Maybe a little bit in here like that. Same here like this. Let's pull this in like that, and then go back to our light blue and come out this way with the light blue. Remember how we did the sky last night where we pinched it and just sort of melted that in? See? Isn't that pretty? Now we haven't had to do much of anything, have, have we? I thought we did pretty good. Um, now, I, I think we want a little purple on the outside of this. So anyway, uh, this, has been, this has been sort of an interesting a day for us as far as you know things are happening over in our neck of the woods but um, uh, John and I are getting ready to go on vacation you guys know we're going to be gone next week but we have I've, so I've been filming madly filming things to release and I filmed us I made a really cool Vincent van Gogh a painting that's going to be released next uh, Wait, let me show that I happen next to have Tuesday, that handy. a really cool picture that's going to be on YouTube next uh, uh, Tuesday. Let's take a break from Ginger for a half okay. a second. And yeah, take I a need look to at blow that. my nose anyway, you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> my, I don't know. I don't have a cold. I'm not saying I do, <clears throat> but I have to do that. All right. So why don't you mute me so I can do a quick blow of my nose. All right. So we have a commercial interruption. What you're seeing right there is going to be a uh, Vincent Van Gogh that's going to, be, going to be released next week while we're cruising. And also in the works is where is our pink rose vase take a look at this one getting ready for the festivities of valentine's day but that one's for our members yeah this is for our members this one's that one's for our members the shoe will be up for youtube while we're gone and right, let's bring okay. ginger back close up here right, so that's good thank you for the commercial break i appreciate that <laughs> Don't like to. All right, so now I'm back to a little bit more of the just a little bit of magenta. See what I'm doing here? A little bit of magenta. I mean, I think this is pretty. Now, the reason you like it, can your brush do this? Can your brush, you know, look at the look at the angle I'm getting. Look at that fine line because when you do an angle brush, you can get a fat line or you can get a thin line. That's what's so cool about it. See that? Isn't that pretty? I mean, that, I think this is a really pretty picture, and I think that. Um, if you understand that pansies are all sort of done in the layers. All right, so we need um, some a little bit of purple over here. So I'm going to take a little mixing white now, and this on this edge here, I'm going to tone that down. <clears throat> I got a couple questions for you when you're sure. Like on that now, I'm going to tone that down. Even if I have to take a little bit of titanium white, put a little white there, tap it off, and I'm going to tone that down. Bring that in like this. Yeah, question. Sure, John. Go Let's ahead. start with, how long did it take you to learn to paint so quickly? Um, you know, okay. I've been painting with acrylic since I was 17. And I used to try to do anything. If, it, if anybody did it in oil, I would attempt to do it in acrylics. And because the deal was that the galleries, if it was acrylics, they didn't want it. And I can remember going to this. I, I was asked to, I did this, um, a series of paintings for an to raise money for these uh, abandoned horses, in which I'm, you know, I'm a big horse fan. And this lady asked me, you know, to do it. And then when she found out I painted in acrylics, when we did the auction, she made it sound like people were getting less than a real oil painting. And I'm telling you what, my horses were so much better than some of the junk that people were, were auctioning, you know, that they had. But she made people think that the acrylics were, were nothing. Now I, you know, all my friends that are professional artists and, you know, and I had been for years, um, you know, use acrylics. I mean, I'm not saying that people don't do oils, but um, listen, oils take a long time to dry and time is money. And nobody cares how long it took you to paint something. And in fact, if you can do something quick, you probably don't want to tell them. But if it took you six hours, they don't want you. You don't get your time out of it. OK, just any more than um, if it takes a surgeon uh, 10 minutes to take out your, your appendix, 
okay? Um, he, how many years did he spend in medical school to learn to do that, all right? So that's the same kind of thing. So I think I've, I took over the years, I learned lots of secrets, and because acrylics dries, uh, dry very quickly, all right? So this is going to be our little darker center in here, so I'm doing this. I want you to kind of explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it. They dry very quickly, so... Um, you, you know you have to paint pretty quick you have to paint fast and you paint a little bit differently and in an oil painting you would paint um I think this overlapped that one I, I sort of missed that okay I can fix that see how this one this this petal overlaps this one but see look how easy that is to fix overlapped see done okay um you don't um you you'd work on overall the whole painting but the acrylics you kind of work on in small areas and then that so you have to know how to mix colors because they're not, you're not going to come back three days later and find these colors okay. I mean, you know, we did a little bit, but really not. You know, oil painters can go away and come back like a week later, ten, ten, you know, two weeks later, and the paints are still good. And, you know, and, and they might have two or three paintings going at once in order to compensate for the drawing time. So, anyway, that's... So I ended up learning to paint pretty quickly. Here we're going back into some orange now. Uh, paint very very quickly because um, I had to uh, because that, that stuff dried so quickly so that to, in order to keep up with it and then so you have to decide when something has to dry and and when it doesn't and uh, there we go so we got that little bit of orange there I think we had a little bit of some sort of pink in the center here let's see a little bit of this magenta is a good color that's another one that's a little bit hard to mix here here's a little orange Okay, coming in here like that. We'll just see. So put a little color like that. Take all the paint off your brush, rinse it, wipe it, and then tap it in. See, like that. Just tap it in because it's still kind of tacky because we haven't dried it with any heat. Okay. And where did you get your art education from? Where did I get my art education from? Well, I started very uh, young. Um, my um, adopted mother was an artist. And even though she was an oil painter, she wasn't a great artist, but she started, she was a good example. She didn't start painting until she was in her late 50s. She was really quite good. She took lessons, and she was really quite, and she was good at what she did. And um, so she was, a, she, you know, this was a, a way we could bond. Does that make sense? You know, we kind of bonded that way because she was an artist, and, uh, you know, it seemed like, and I liked to do it. And so she saw that I had lessons, and she really did. She had, sorry, I had lessons, and... I had this one teacher in the fourth grade. I like to talk about him, Mr. Lampson. Here we're going into a little bit of this phthalo blue and green on this one. It's really kind of pretty here. And we've got something coming back this way on this uh, pansy that's doing this. Don't really understand it, but I'll just take his word for it that that's what's here. Okay, like that. And anyway, Mr. Lampson had us out on the, you know, she hired him to give art lessons in our basement for the neighborhood kids and me, which was really nice. So I got some art lessons there. And then I went to private school in Tacoma, Washington um, the following year. And, you know, they had a real, it's a private school, so they had a real art teacher. So, you know, so continuing my art education, it kept, I kept it up. And then I would buy books and I would read a lot of books and stuff like that. I would, you know, I did that. And uh, let's see, let's see, where else? Oh, yeah. So then when I was 15, my mother sent me to school in Switzerland for my, for, and I had, a, we had an art teacher there who really probably didn't teach me as much as just let me paint and do stuff, and she was very impressed with what I did, and took me down to, to show her friends at the La Colle de Fons Art in, uh, in Lausanne, and made arrangements for me, even though they only took kids that uh, had had two years of college and spoke French very well, and my language skills absolutely are terrible. Um, they were willing to take me at, at uh, 16 into their school, but uh, you know I chose to, uh, instead to continue on with American High School. But so I've been I've been doing art for a long time, and then I went to Arizona State University, took a little art. But here's the problem with some of that, and I got to say that quite honestly, what I discovered in the universities was they give assignments and then tell you how you screwed up, but you didn't get a lot of you didn't get a lot of instruction. And I always said that when I was an art, if I was an art teacher, I would at least explain what you did. I was always very disappointed. Sometimes I took from private, um, private uh, uh, artists, you know, 
would go in like say somebody like myself and I'd take lessons from that person apprentice under them for you know a few weeks when I could afford it that kind of thing because really the you except for you know stuff on design and stuff is the actual painting and stuff you didn't get so a lot of the things that I know when I started I got married very young I was 18 when I got married Cinnamon's dad was really young and so a lot of that um, uh, you know, I, I, I was really forced to kind of learn on my own. Okay, you see what we've got here? We're almost done. Don't you think, aren't that kind of interesting how fast this went? It's amazing. Next question would be, if you're in your late 20s, would you recommend going to school? Um, well, here's the thing. I mean, it depends on what you're going to school for. Um, I and mean, if you're going to school to be an artist, okay, um, and you want, and what is your goal? If you're if you're going to school to you know design in computer games or something, you pretty much have to go. I think if you're going to be a computer game artist. Uh, that's a lot of that art now is all digital. You think about what people are are doing. Um, it's not going to, um, you know, Cinnamon has a degree in uh, you know fine art, and she went to school for it. And I, what I love about talking to Cinnamon, I used to love to take her to galleries with me because she she has a vocabulary that's really fun. She can get really down and kind of, um, if, if the gallery gets a little bit um, high-minded, let me put it that way, really kind of impressed with themselves, Cinnamon gets down there and, and, and can do some vocabulary back that just sets them on their heels. It's really fun to go places with when she does that. <laughs> just, I, 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 that's not me. I don't, I'm, I'm not saying, I mean, she can do it. And, you know, like she'll start talking about the lighting. Well, what kind of lighting do you have? And, you know, and and, and uh, what artists are you featuring? I mean, she has really, really good education, and and uh, there's nothing wrong with education. Any, all the education you can get, you're going to learn something from somebody. I would say if you can take some, there's an artist that you admire, and you can take some lessons from them, find out what they know. Um, everybody can teach you something. When Cinnamon was uh, going to junior college, there wasn't enough. Uh, they were going to drop the the class. We're doing a little orange here. They were going to drop the art class that she wanted to take because. Uh, there weren't enough students, so I went up there and took the art class with her. And I could have taught the class at that point. But this woman, her name was Bonnie Newman, um, she taught me how to stretch canvases. And I've taught all you thousands of people to stretch canvases because Bonnie Newman taught me. Now, what do you think about that? I think that's swell. I mean, Bonnie, I didn't have the first clue how to stretch a canvas, you know, and she taught me. And then I taught all these other people, okay? How to stretch a canvas and and lucent how to stretch a canvas is really useful information. Okay, I got to tell you, that's really useful. We're putting a little purple and magenta down here like this. See, here's our little uh, little mask here, a little pansy mask. Is that kind of looking cute or what? Okay. I wish you, the uh, paint roller squisher wrangler thing you have. Mm -hmm. Whose do you use? Well, the problem is I've had one for years. The ones I don't want to use, the ones that I know you don't want to use, are the ones, can I say this? Yeah, you can say it, made of plastic. Well, well, you want the plastic handle with the metal insides. Yeah. But the problem is that there, there's a certain company I used to teach at for years, and we couldn't find one that, wasn't, that would work. I'm, uh, sometimes people then, sh I hate to even say it, if it doesn't roll easily, it's broken. If you have to struggle with it, it doesn't work. And the problem was that sometimes they get a, you know, the, the, you, some brand you've used forever, and then suddenly they get made overseas, and they don't work anymore. And it's very disturbing. You know, they're made somewhere, and that's the factory number three, and everybody's in a hurry, and I don't know what happened. But so you can, we went through about 20 of them and took them all back. And finally I said, I don't understand it. These were working fine last year, and they had changed the manufacturers of who did it. And who's to say they haven't changed back? So all I can say is when you do it, when you do do it, make sure that um, that it does roll easily. And it, the, the all metal ones seem, don't seem to work very well for me. And the, because um, I gotta be careful, I'm gonna sue here for saying stuff. But you know, the all metal ones, I have not found to be effect, as effective as the plastic part plastic and then the... Um, the roller part being the metal part. Yeah, the part. roller part being metal. And that, those are the ones that work the best. And they got to turn easily. If they start spinning the gears, there's something off with the gears. Take it back and find one that works. You know, that's the thing. And then and, 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 and companies don't know. I mean, they get the, they order the stuff, the things that their, their samples worked, and they, will, they won't know 
that theirs doesn't work unless you don't if you don't tell them. Okay, so I'm putting a little bit of red here like that to kind of balance this picture out here like that. See, I'm coming back here, so they won't know. There's I have a thing on there on YouTube on on which ones. I did. I'm, do you guys remember that? I did do that. Then we got a pansy up here too. Remember, we put some color in this one. So should a 20 year old go back to school? Only if they want to get into art, maybe, right? Or do it professionally? Well, I mean... Um, that's a tough question. That's a tough question. I think it depends on... The, the thing of it is, is that... What are you trying to do with your art? And if you are you trying to make a living selling uh, 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 selling as an artist? Because that's tough to do. Um, it, it's doable, but it's, it, you know you can certainly always... If you go to school, you can always teach. Get a job and learn, and, and you can always teach at a university and then, you know, or a high school or something. So going to school is not a bad thing. And you're going to learn some stuff. You know, in history of art, you're going to learn some stuff. And, and maybe at your college that where you're going, you're going to learn a lot. That's, you know, you can't go by my experience and say, well, she didn't learn anything at her school, so I, I won't go. Um, you know, that's crazy. You know, it, you just, um, you know, just because I wasn't impressed with what they did with me um, doesn't mean that you wouldn't just absolutely love it. So yeah, I, I would say that. Um, but but get but do learn the craft. Do learn what you're learning. You know, try to learn. Um, you know, one of the things we one of the things I think that John and I, you know, on our website gingercooklive.gallery, we're twenty. What are we to? Twenty six dollars a month. Yeah. Six ninety five a month for um, over two hundred and fifty lessons plus personal art coaching. I mean, I don't know where you're going to go to school ch cheaper than that. So <laughs> you know, wherever it's, you're going to go to school, I mean, that's. I think That's we are like cheap. the deal. That's I think we're like the deal of the century here. You know, I gotta say that. I think we're like the deal, and we can show you a lot of stuff. And then you know, if you're gonna want to learn airbrush, you gotta go find someone that can teach you that. These are the kind of things that you you need to know. Now, notice that. Look at the odd shape. One of the things that artists have to do is if if you can imagine that your job is to define define shapes. Okay. So um, it's not just a blob of black in the center. Does it look like the letter H? Is it, um, is it two letters put together? Um, is there a shadow here? Is there a little darkness here? In other words, um, when, you, when you start doing these pansies, look at the shape of things of this. I mean, is there dark here? I'm going to start to put in a little bit of dark here. And then right here, is this dark? What's the shape of that? Okay, and then maybe back up here, there's a little shape, a little dark shape, sort of a combination of purple and uh, this. And then, of course, pansies often get layered. All right, so now I'm going to take some green, right? And I'm just going to kind of, tr we're going to do the old trim here on this leaf here, like that. We're going to just make this pansy a little smaller. See, I mean, you can do that too. So you could do that. I'm not sure where they're at. They're asking what color is she using for the center? Uh, I'm, for the center, I'm using purple and magenta for the center. Okay. And I'm going to come back in here with some colors, just a little purple and magenta. Just sort of go around the outside of this now, kind of raise some of my chalk marks, and work on this pansy over here, which is quite dark, with a little purple and magenta over in here like this. Do you always use a reference photo when you're painting? You have, must use a reference photo. Yes, you absolutely must. And this, you know, uh, even the old timers did. The it. old and listen, uh, all of those guys either took photographs because they could. The photography was around since the Civil War, and 1865. And, and in case you were wondering when that was, and um, yeah, you've got to have reference photos. If you want a dumb picture, don't have a reference photo because you just you're going to have a cartoon then. All right, and they they had. Um, Reference photos. Now, there's some things that you, if you do it over and over again, you just know how to draw like the letter L. You just know how to do it, okay? So then you say, well, I don't need a reference photo. I do this or so-and-so doesn't do it. Trust me, they've done that over and over again. And maybe if you have a photographic memory, you don't. But the best artists I know, including all the old dead ones, they all use reference <laughs> photos. They use models. Um, they did all that. And, and there's a reason for it um, because... Um, you need the lights and the darks. You need so much more information than you're getting. Okay, so we're just going to kind of make this a little smaller than here too. And pull some colors in here. Pull a little green in here like this. Okay. All right, and then come back here with a little purple over that. Just suggest. I mean, you can just. Do you see what we're doing here? Just, just suggest a little color, and this it's. 
maybe a little white. And see, I'm gooping some color on my brush. You usually don't see me paint like this, but I'm gooping some color on my brush and just pulling it like this. There, out of, out of the canvas. It's just a different, different way to load a, load a brush. Um, so yeah, you want reference photos and, and lots of them. And um, that's a whole art. I mean, sure, I'd sure go back to school and take a photography class. Wouldn't you suggest that, John? Absolutely. Yeah, every you know, if you don't, you know, take you a photography class. You want to learn the composition class. rules and all that. Yeah, and you need to study composition. I mean, it's a language. It's, because not every photograph makes a good painting. Yeah, most of them don't make a good painting. So they make so good you, photographs. So you got it's two different media. And so yeah, so you you know you need to study basic design. You can certainly learn that in any college. That that they certainly the rules of design you need to know. And uh, so there's so many things that you need to know. I was spoiled. Cinnamon went to school and took um, the genesis of that was she went on a trip one time on a cruise. And she was uh, still in college, and she came back with some pictures of her cruise, and she had gone out swimming. And I just saw a lot of feet and legs. I said, you know, in the pictures, I said, why don't you take a photography class? Then we can, you know, you can take pictures. That'd be great, right? So anyway, she ended up being just excelling at photography. And so when she and I would go to trips in Europe and stuff like that, she took a lot of my pictures for me. It was really nice, i got to tell you. Really nice. See, I'm going to start pulling out some of this out here like this. Do you have any concerns about using the cadmium colors? No, not one. You're not eating the paint. I don't eat the paint, right? Um, you know you? where that there's a concern. I have more concern. Can I tell you where I think is concern? I have more concern over nail polish. Yeah, I would too. I have more concern over nail polish and acrylic nails. I mean, because um, I'm mean, just saying. There's just, uh, you think about it, you're covering all that surface, no longer breathes with plastic. And, um, you know, in ancient Roman times, and I have nothing to back this up. This is just my own personal feeling, all right? There's nothing to back it up. But in ancient Roman times, one of the things they used to do was they, for parades, they'd, they'd cover kids, the little kids in gold to make them look like cherubs or something. And then by the end of the parade, they were quite dead. And um, they discovered that if you cover the whole body with paint, even just some of it, this is very bad for you, okay? Well, I don't know if it, anybody's ever done any studies about nail polish or, and whether it's good for you or not. But, you know, if I, I would be more concerned about nail polish for me than I would about, uh, you know, wearing it all the time than I would about, um, you know, that stuff. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of green on the edges here, bring that forward a little bit. So here's a comment. Going back to using a reference photo, how about if the idea only exists in your mind? You better be drawing it. Well, for instance, like one of my friends, um, one of my friends uh, who used to work for Disney, he would, he would get models, he'd rent costumes, he'd set the whole thing up. The idea only did exist in his mind, so he would set up the reference photo. And he, it was, would he, would, he would make the reference photos. Yeah. So if the idea only exists in your mind, okay? You've got to get it down on you've paper You've got to get it somehow. So you, you, you know, if you're going to draw a wolf, maybe you need 10 photos, right? Maybe you need 10 photos, okay? to say that that's going to be okay, all right? Or, um, you know, in other words, you're not going to, you may not get the, uh, I think it was Renoir that, you know, he had that, he had all his friends, there's a wonderful big painting, like the size of the one behind me, bigger, of um, these guys on a boat all, all having drinks and their women and uh, having a good time. He set that all up and took photographs. Yes, it was all in his mind. I mean, it was, it was all in his mind, but you need a reference. You need the reference and... Um, that's that's the bottom line and and you know it depends on it depends on what you're painting for instance if you're making up well for instance a unicorn and obviously how are you going to get a reference for, photo for a unicorn well obviously you can't but you can get a reference photo for a uh for a horse and you can get a reference photo for a horn of some kind how horns look and you may have to put them together right but that's you, why they have photoshop and um, and even if you just you know so at some point yeah you can use your imagination. See, I'm liking these colors now. See how we're see how we're adding a few little bright colors to this now. We're almost done, don't you think, John? You are improving upon the original as usual. Well, I'm saying this is. I mean, if you show Pansy Garden again, show our Pansy Basket, right? Pansy Basket show, coming show, up. Show Pansy Basket. So I want to invite you guys to come over and uh, you know paint some of the stuff with us on our website i'm going to put some more green leaves down in here we'll pop it real quickly yeah just pop that up here where i put there some you more go green pansy leaves. 
Pansy Here's basket. our pansy basket. Now you can see kind of how he painted these pansies. Um, you know how easy it might be to very um, similar. To you know to you know to come over and uh, you know check out just out. We'll show you different ways to do some stuff. A lot of different ways to paint something. Okay, gotta say that a lot of different ways to paint something. We put some. We're gonna just put some greenery down in here. I I, I think kind of like that, don't you guys? Here's a little bit of phthalo blue. I want something kind of blue down in here, this sort of turquoisey blue green color down in here like this. And pull that on in here like that. That's sort of pretty. Put some more white with it like that and kind of lighten something up. Ooh, that's pretty. Here's a quick question for you. How many paintings do you have hanging on your walls? Um, well, the room room's got probably close to 30, 40. I don't know. I have a lot of <laughs> paintings. 100. And of course, I sell a lot, uh, too. And, you know, things get sold and are gone. Um, but I have a lot of, we have a lot of paintings. Mm. If you guys want to manipulate photos, yeah, either go to a Photoshop class or you can get a lot of things on YouTube. Um, if you have an iPad, I'd recommend using Procreate and learn how to use that. And there's a, there's there's a, a book I recommend. You guys should go to my, if you go to my Pinterest page, okay, I have, this, I have books that I recommend people get. All right. Which will and, be and that's on. one that I, in fact, I just recommended today. I think I need to bring this. Um, I'm looking at this flower. It's kind of coming down a little more than I have it. So let's just let's just bring it down this way. Ginger, if I use a photo, a reference photo, then I paint it. Do the copyright laws apply to the painting? We're not um, lawyers for one. Yes, yeah, so I'm not giving legal advice for two. Yep. Now go ahead and say what you want to say. Well, for one thing, for instance, is it your photo? Whose photo is it? For instance, if you go to paint my photo or what's that other one, those are copyright free photos. But if you go up to the internet and you just find a photo, say, of Marilyn Monroe, that's a copyrighted photo, probably. So so you don't get to, you know, um, and that's fine. I mean, nobody's going to care if you do it for your house or you probably even with a local gallery that who will know, right? You start putting it in print and stuff, someone will know. Um, they have... Um, uh, Coca-Cola, uh, National Geographic, they have whole departments of people, their whole job is to find infringements. And, and for instance, if you find Pinterest, I mean, people think that they saw it on Pinterest, it's like a free-for-all. It is not a free-for-all just because you found it on Pinterest. I've got to move this, you guys, so I can, let me just take this up and, you How know. How many I, cameras do you have to own? Well, in my opinion, you can't own enough. I know, John, but you, you don't count. Oh. But read, how many cameras? You know, it's just how many cameras do reasonable people like to own. Well, you know what's great is you have an iPhone. And, the, you, you know, the cameras that's on your iPhone was probably about a $12,000 camera. Oh, yeah. At 1990 or maybe more. I mean, the cameras that we have now that we just take for granted. Oh, yeah, this is camera here, whatever, right? I'm telling you, it's amazing, okay? Um, I, you can't believe the cameras we have now. See, we're going to kind of brighten up some flowers here, brighten up something here. What program does G use for her students' comments? She used a combination of Corel Painter and Snagit. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll sometimes I go in and I'll repaint something on, on Painter. For yeah. that. You know, I'll go in and repaint the whole painting if I have to. <laughs> yeah, she's say, working on one for I another think you person. Should have done doing one for somebody. I don't do it for everybody, but occasionally I do it. But the thing is, I try to make it clear enough for. For instance, if I see, you know, if you send me a painting, and I want to say this, and, you know, if you send me a painting, what, what I would tell you is, is that I'm not going to tell you everything that I think is wrong with your picture. I'm going to find out some things I think you did really well and point those out, too, because that's learning, too. Why did, what did you do that really worked, okay? Okay, that's as important as what you did that didn't work. And then maybe, um, what did you... Um, uh, you know, what did you do that might have, there's something over here, we're just going to put it here like this, we're going to wiggle this out here like this, I don't get it, but we're doing it, okay, something like that, and it kind of came down in here like this, okay, you saw the picture, I'm doing it, um, you know, what are a couple of things that you could do right now that would improve the painting, not everything, but one or two things, just maybe one or two things, if you get that every time you get some critique, you know, like a, you know, like some suggestions, and occasionally, and occasionally I'll write back to somebody, in fact, I did today, and said, wow, you just knocked this out of the park. Now I'm putting, see, we're starting to layer some colors over some of this. I really could add, this is a little just sort of light blue, look at this, light layers, layering some colors over this like that. You moved your palette on me. Huh? 
Your palate slid up a little bit on me. It slid? Does it need to go this way? It needs to come back down a little bit. Okay. Right there. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, sure. Then no problem. Um, I'm just, uh, maybe I need something a little bit lighter right there. Maybe I need this to be a little bit um, softer here, like that on this petal. Maybe oh, Ginger look. looks pretty in pink. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I just had to share that with you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so you can kind of see, I mean, did you kind of see how we, I mean... I mean, just in an hour. I mean, if you spend a little more time and, you know, didn't get to feel too distracted, I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying, what did you do, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, I always say that to people at painting parties. They sit there and they'll go, well, something wrong with my picture. I said, yeah, but you're, st you're not sober anymore, sweetheart. <laughs> I mean, they don't even let you drive cars. You've got a designated driver. What makes you think that... <laughs> I'm what sorry. What makes you think you can paint? Well, I can't, can't say that because I'd get fired, but I'm just saying <laughs> that, I mean, it just astounds me sometimes. Well, I don't understand why this painting isn't working. Really? Really? <laughs> really? You don't understand? You, you, have had, you have had like 15 glasses of wine, you can barely make it to the restroom and hold the brush, and now you want some sort of different result. Well, I mean, sometimes if you have a little, you know, we're just, I'm just saying, we're all chatting here and fooling around, right? And talking at the same time and telling all kinds of fun stories. And so, yeah, so if you spend a little time, sometimes, um, I think I need more white, just a little bit. We're almost done. But I'm just saying that sometimes when you just give it something, you're 100% focused and all the noise is off in the room and you're just focusing, you can really, you know, accomplish great things. And the nice thing about painting is that it is mesmerizing. And you know what I'm talking about, too. It is. It's, me it's, it's relaxing. mesmerizing. Relaxing. It's mesmerizing. Let's just put a little bit of light here on there. Some little bit of green, some little little light color in here like that. There, see? Um, I think it's kind of fun. I think, I think we did pretty good on this picture. And if you were to follow along with the example photograph, you might find some other little bits of uh, white that you might want to put in somewhere. Just a little bit of white here. Put some white back here. I might put some more yellow. Kind of leave that pansy out where it's not just, you know, so much in focus. Um, lots of things you can do uh, when you're just thinking about it, but painting really does relax you. It absolutely it makes a whale of difference in your well-being. I think it's one of really gardening probably does that too. Your gardening is good for people. Not everybody can get up and garden. If you can sit down, and um, you know, one of the things we have small paintings. We do a lot of our lessons are very small, six by eight. And the reason being is I don't want you to waste a lot of paint. Uh, learning how to paint something. Don't try to do something big until you kind of figure out how to do it. Okay? So let's see. I'm trying to think of what else I could put here while we're ch still chatting. A little bit of pink right there. A little bit of you know peach right there. Um, we could probably bring this a little closer together here. There we go. Like that. Something like that. So yeah, I'm just trying to have fun with this. That would be the main thing. And, you know, any time you can get educated in, in your field and you have the opportunity, and particularly someone else will, you know, take it. Because you never know why you're there. Sometimes you're there to learn one thing and you discover something else. When I went and took up Bonnie Newman's class for my uh, daughter, I never knew how to stretch a canvas. And I learned that. And I also, let's see what else I learned. I learned about tape. I'd never heard of artist tape till. Her. Every artist has something they can teach you. And um, you can take advantage of it. Hmm. Absolutely. Here's a question we get all the time. How does a person learn to loosen up their painting style? By copying stuff like this. Because in yep. other words, it, you copy loose paintings. That's the best way that, to that, do it. You just have to do a lot of different pictures. A lot of different styles. And that's one of the reasons we, we keep changing the paintings. I mean, look what we did last night. Look at this painting here. We do so many different paintings, um, and the reason we do that, all right, and let's see, I'm going to need a little more yellow. Oh, do, do, do. Um, we do so many different styles of paintings because, because there's a lot of different ways to paint something, and you're going to learn your way after trying a lot of different ones, and sometimes you just have to learn things you don't want to know, don't want to know how to paint, Okay. Sometimes they're just, you, you know, I think my good friend Victoria doesn't like landscapes. Well, she had to do with you before she decided she didn't. How would you know until you tried it? But that's just, it's okay not to like to paint something. And, um, but try it. You know, give yourself the benefit of, you know, the doubt. Try painting something. See if, you know, see what Again, happens. Again, that's why we have such a variety. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm going to pull a little yellow out here like that in this one. There we go, like that. That's pretty. Okay, I think I'm doing pretty good here, John. If I keep playing with it, I might mess it up. And I think at this point, somebody says, when do you quit? I, you know, I just want a few little bright color surprises here. Yeah, that's um, one of those questions we have from one of our members. When do I stop? Well, I just want to add a few little color surprises here, just a couple little bright flashes of color here. And one of the ways to do that is some uh, turquoise. You, you can put compliments. For instance, like phthalo blue and white. You know, it's got kind of a light color blue here. It's very pretty next to orange, right? So here's some, some orange. So if I put a little blue there, that's pretty. Does and we know sense? that because of the color wheel. Because right? of the color wheel, that's right. Because of the color wheel. And that might be pretty right here, even though um, that's probably a little bit darker than this artist has it in the picture. Okay. And I still could put a tiny bit. I hate to put more paint out because I'm almost done here. But you could do that. So um, let's How see, do you that's... keep your paints from drying out on the palette? Uh, they, I, I, I bound them up like this. And I use a wax paper palette. And uh, you can mist them a little bit. And I, they're not drying out for me. And what are their lights? Lights, right, so camera, light action. This. Like that. And then just say that there's a little light here. Oh, fancy. Like that. And I think I need white. Sue, 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 don't worry. We're working on it. Don't worry. It's coming. About what? About the white? What? About what? About what? We have something for everyone except the farmer who's missing the tractor in the old barn. Well, I'm sorry. But listen, <laughs> she came up with a great suggestion. I'm going to say it. All right? Sue but, suggested... And I'm sure you'll all agree that what I need is a marshmallow gun. And every once in a while, I'll just lob stuff at John. Does that sound fun? <laughs> I, I don't think that is really, um, you know, the gecko will rise. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> the gecko will rise. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right. So Sue so, so thinks he needs a few. See how pretty this little bit of blue is here? And there's a little bit of maybe a little bit of blue color right there. A little bit of blue color. Just a drop here and then there. A little bit of that color in here, up here like that, maybe back here. A little bit of what, you know, just. I'm nervous about this one. It is very impressionistic. Any suggestions? Yeah, jump in with both feet and do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, this is, um, this can be, this can be fun. I mean, if I look at, now look here, I think we did pretty well. Don't you think so? And, you know, you can sit there and you can take, you can go back with a little purple. And every once in a while, you can put a little purple in here and kind of knock back something. If you've got, uh, you know, this flower a little bigger than you wanted, you can come back here and make it smaller. Okay, you know how to do that, right? You know, just come around and, um, you know, put a little color in here. If you need to knock back something, do it. I, I know I want a little bit of dark right there. Look at that, see? So, I mean, you can have really a lot of fun with something like this, I think. And... Um, just make sure I have a little bit of, uh, okay, oh, I see there. There's a little bit of color right there that I missed, and I'm going to put it right now. I'm going to clean my brush, get a tiny bit of this magenta, and a little bit of magenta That's true, Wendy. A marshmallow gun is better than a potato gun. Well, nobody's talking about potato guns. Let's not talk about that. You know, hey, wait a minute. I say take them on the cruise and give them a burial at sea. Manette, that's not nice. <laughs> um... He's thinking about painting him in it and putting a tuxedo on him. I'm not kidding. On what, my gecko? Yeah. Absolutely. His, his, next, his next phase is to paint him for you guys. There you go. All right, so there's a little purple on that. I mean, I think that's pretty. I think we should stop there. What do you guys think? I think that kind of was nice. I'm looking down here. There's a little bit of light yellow down here. I could sit here and play with all night. Yeah, I just, um, you know, hope to answer some of these questions. Um, can you pull the painting down just a skosh? Here. As my father would say. Just a skosh, yeah. My dad's done stuff like that, too. But one thing I, that's very fun, John and I, um, our parents uh, sounded like they'd gone to the same parenting school, had the same comments about everything. We, we laugh all the time. Did your parents say that? Oh, yes, my parents said that. There's a little bit of the green on that, that pansy. Yeah, and I went a little bit more light right there. Uh, white and uh, where did I put the titanium? Is this titanium? I can't remember. I want to just drop some light yellow right here and here. There. Perfect. Okay. I'm happy. I think that's so fine. That means you're going to be done with it? 
and I could. And yeah, I so I'm going to blow up my image next to it. Yeah. So they yeah. have a side by side, and okay. But it means you have to stop. All right, I'm stopping. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. I think that's fine. You get the idea of how you might paint something like this. And again, we'd like to invite you to come over to our website to try us for a week. Uh, just 9.95 for uh, seven seven days, and try us for a week and paint the big pansy basket and all those baskets of pansies. And, Kind of get an idea how you might uh, paint that, something like this. This is a 9 by 12 canvas, you can see that. And you look at the, how pretty the, the palette is, too, all these colors on our palette. You can kind of see where we are. Kind of blew this up here. Now, one thing I can see already, when you put it side by side, John, can you see that? Now, you see how much darker it is up in the corner? So part of me would just take this and just... What are you seeing? You're not corner. seeing... I'm seeing some dark right up there in the corner. I'll just take that out, see? But you're not seeing the... Um, I'm seeing this picture and this picture. I'm seeing on the screen? On the screen. Are you not seeing it? I didn't think you could see that. I can see that right there, see? Oh, no. I have um, it superimposed. Oh, I have this piece too. Yeah, you have the printout. No, I that's have good the printout. But I gave them the actual image. Oh, you gave them the actual and I have yeah. the printout. Okay, yeah. so there you go. So, But you can see I'm kind of dark in this corner because I'm looking at it. I'm going around here the top like this, making sure I've you know, kind of got the edges like that. And I can, I'm kind of looking at the picture and saying, I think that's pretty, I think that's very pretty. I think we've sort of got that. And, and um, that's how you do a picture like this. Where can you find this photo? We did a Google search for pansies by Vincent Van Gogh, and this one showed up, as well as some of Ginger's. Uh, this, uh, yeah, this one showed up. Yeah, it was this just a, a fluke. Uh, it uh, caught uh, our uh, eye. It was, uh, uh, yeah, and yet I never heard of this artist before, but no. I thought this was. What pretty. was his name again? His name was Paul Gabriel. Paul Gabriel. And um, I, I just thought it was. A, I thought it was pretty. You know, that's what it was. It caught my attention. It, um, uh, it would be a pattern I'd like on a shirt. You know, something like that. I thought it was pretty. And which color would you sign with? Oh, um, you know, there's... <laughs> With so know, many colors on there. Um, what you'd probably want to do, let's just take a small little brush, I'll sign it. Because it's out of copyright, so I can sign it, it's okay, guess what, it's out of copyright, alright? So, um, I'd probably take um, some white here. I want to make sure I have titanium and not mixing white. Uh, and I can't remember where I put anything anymore, because I've got sort of a... I, I've ignored all the tabs now, I've just put paint anywhere I've got room, so I'm going to... My brush is sort of an off-white here, and I'd probably just come down here and uh, maybe just sign it right here. Are all of the paintings this fast? Well, you can slow them down. Yeah, when you... Uh, when you, you can pause you, and rewind. They're step by step. Usually most of them, we do a little faster here on YouTube. They're step by step. Everything is explained, and you pause and then rewind, and that, that's the whole idea behind it, right? We put a little red slash through the name. There you go. Here's Cook. Just sign that. And, you know, um, the other thing is I'd just like to mention why I signed my name Cook and not Ginger Cook. is because years ago when I was um, trying to establish myself as an artist, I found there was a little bit of prejudice against female artists. Just a little bit. And what I discovered was is that um, if you... Um, signed it just by that name cook it didn't necessarily have to, it could be any gender all right and then once that was true so i'm just kind of you see me just kind of playing with his as i'm looking at the picture uh, once once i've established you know then once they decided that they did you know then people could then find out that it was a female artist that did it interesting right i mean just the things we have to do well i don't know that you'd have to do that now but that's that's why i started that I mean, at the time I was doing it, there had never been a female chef in the White House. There were Kinda all men. Like and I mean, women cook, but the, somehow the chefs were all men. I, it sounds like I'm a bit of a woman's liver. And I suppose, liver, I suppose in some ways, um, I'm not saying I am or I'm, well, you know what? There, I just had certain little hot buttons. And one of them was that, you know, um, you, you don't want to be disregarded out of hand just because of your gender, you know? And um, so that's why I would just sign it like that. And how long are the lessons on the website? Anywhere from an hour to five or six hours? Yeah, and there's over 250. I mean, there's more we, than anybody over, could possibly And they're all do. broken up. You know, we break them up into bite-sized pieces. 
you know, break them up. And, and there's everything. You can go and look at our library, video lesson library, without actually having to access any of the lessons. You can look at what we've got, everything from dogs to Monet to Renoirs to a Ginger Cooks to, you know, every, any kind of subject. Um, and that's what, you know, what we're about is... Um, so you're still painting, aren't you? Even though you said you were done. Well, I mean, who's ever done, really, right? <laughs> Who's ever done? But I mean, we listen. This was we really almost finished this in an hour, didn't we? Oh, you did absolutely. I mean, I think it's only so. hour fifteen. Yeah, and I sort of made this nice and big, and you can kind of see the pansies, and it's sort of. Uh, I mean, I like this kind of you know all the paint colors swirling around. I think that's very pretty. I like all that look, the way that looks, and part of me wants to. Um, I don't do one thing right there. You know, part of me really, John. I'm sorry. I know that you know we have any more questions I can answer when I do that one little thing. Um, I'm, I'm digging. All right, so dig, dig, dig a little bit more. Did, did Terry did, did Terry get on to answer her question? I did not see Terry come on at all. Okay, so this was we. we went so if on. Terry, if you're still out there, apparently somebody suggested you have to have the Google Chrome loaded as well, oh. which I automatically do. So it didn't even occur to me. So thank you, ever who told me that a hundred hundred hours ago. Oh, we forgot to tell you that. So, all right, so we have this. Uh, Supplemental thoughts yeah, here. Supplemental saga to the YouTube situation. Apparently on the iPad, if you're going to use the YouTube app and want to chat, you also have to have Google Chrome loaded. So it must be using part of the Google Chrome engine to do the chat part. All Just right. so you know. Could we have a 50s painting of a car, say a Buick? <laughs> Could we be more specific? A special <laughs> model, a certain color? We have more of those type coming because I'm. Well, Sammy's getting involved and he's coming up with new ideas. Um, well, he yeah. Often ask John what he thinks we ought to paint. You know what I mean? And um, he'll say that you know he'll say, well, why don't we do a car or why don't we do something like that? And John we get has shot some down. Good ideas, you know. But I get shut down. And um, I'm just I'm sorry I'm just. Batty. There like that. Batty, Batty's trying like to that. get my attention. Um, hey there. Ginger, would you do this in gels? Thickening gels? Um, no, I don't think so. I think no, because there's a lot of glazing involved in this. I don't think I would do it in thickening gels. Um, oh, you, I mean, that came there's back. There's a lot of little time. glazing. If I look at his really closely, you, and you've got a little green on your brush like this, there's a lot of little, like, just over the edges here like this with water. I'm very thin layers of, like, just little tiny tints on the edge of, like, of these flowers of, like, a little green that's coming this way, stuff like that. I mean, I see just tiny bits, and you could actually spend a little more time here, you know, glazing this flower than I did. A Buick Skylark, could. Barracuda, another so, game specific. You know, you've, you've got a little bit of, um, uh, you've got a lot of glazes and layers in this, I guess that's what I would say. We've got a lot of, absolutely have a lot of glazes and layers in this. This goes like this. Same have you been photographing all of your work over the many years of painting? I do what? Have you been photographing your work? Oh, yeah, I have. And, uh, for instance, uh, I don't know if my website's up because I have to pay those guys again. <laughs> um, GingerCookLive.gallery. I think I have to give them some more money. We need um, to move that site. I, I just, we, John's supposed to move the site, and I can't do anything with it. They, uh, the, the site, that this website where I have some of my major artwork, it's... Um, Outdated it's website. Outdated, and I, there's no program that'll even allow me to add anything or even let, leave a message. But I still have a lot of work up there at gingercooklive.gallery. And, and remind me, John, I'll go over there and, you know, throw them 10 bucks and get the site back up or whatever it is they want. Um, but yes, I have a lot of, of my artwork up there. Okay, apparently two people have said they have iPad and chat is working and they do not have Chrome. Okay. I didn't think there would be a relationship, but there could be. I mean, YouTube, Google, Chrome, all, all together. Well, you know, you never know, do you? No. You, you never so, know. thanks for that input. So, Terry, I don't know why you're not communicating with us. Well, maybe no she excuses. didn't get on tonight, right? You know, if she wanted to get on, maybe she did Well, no, she was all excited when I called her. She, you know, she, she probably to wanted to get on a little bit. Oh, here's the one for you, Ginger. Can we paint a belly dancer? You can. Um... I tend to stay away from figurative <laughs> artwork. One of the things I'm trying to do, we might do, you know, if we do people, we'll do it on our on our teaching website, you know, over there on the academy site. I try to keep things here on YouTube that any, you know, really, I think anybody could come along and paint this. You know, kind of watching me do it, I think this is a doable picture. 
I mean, I really do. I mean, I think this is extremely doable. And um, like, for instance, when I see this here like this, I'm going to just cut this pansy leaf down like that. Do you see that? Okay. If you were going to paint the sides of this, if it was a thick gallery wrap, would you just do a solid color or would you wrap the flowers around or what would you do? Um, that's a good question. Something like this. Can, can I lift it up? Can, can you see the sides? Yes, you can. I mean, honestly, all you'd see is this, this uh, blue or this purple background. You might do a little green. If it's a big white gallery wrap, if, there really are no flowers to wrap around. When you think about it, there's yeah, none to the wrap around. Gone. You could wrap around some of this stuff and it wouldn't be wrong. You could come like this, do something like this and then wrap something around. Or some of these green leaves like this, just come out to the edge and wrap some of these around. And then um, like up here, I think there's more green. Let's see. I'm just still looking up here like this on this back end. But there, there really isn't anything to wrap around. But I would certainly paint all the way around it. You know, just, uh, certainly want, you certainly would want to do that, just paint all around it. And, um, but that's the fun thing about, you know, looking on the internet, finding fun things to do, th things that are a little bit different to see. I think that's great. You can kind of so we'll pull this off now. And um, let me just get this palette out of the way. You can kind of see it and you can see our picture. There's our pansy. And, uh, uh, and, and someone asked me, what are these? These are wax paper tablets. This is what they look like. Um, this is the Soho, and I like the gray ones because you can see the white colors as opposed to white, okay? So I really like this uh, Urban Artist Soho. Then you get these at Jerry's, 9 by 12 And um, let's see, what else can I show real quick? I had, um, here's, let's see, I have that here somewhere, John. Here, somebody asked about the paint tube roller. I'll just do a demonstration real quick on it before we say goodbye. All right, so here's that. Can you guys, can you see me? I'm down here, right? I'm going to put this like this, and I'm going to just um, roll this up. Now, make sure, aim this away from you. If you could squirt paint clear onto somebody. Make sure the lid's tight. And don't go up very far. Just enough where you don't split the tube, okay? Make sure you go up where you don't split the tube. I want to say that. And uh, make sure you're doing that. And... Um, you know, you want to, want to you can, on a metal tube, for instance, you can see where I've done it on this, right? And I've gone all the way up here. See, I've got this all wrinkly, so I get the last little bit of paint out of these. These paint, I've had one for 20 years. I mean, and then I lost, I mean, they really work good. This is called, um, let me put my glasses on. There's actually a title on this, catalog number 205. That means nothing. I don't know what that means. This is um, a Gill Mechanical Company. G-I-L-L -L Mechanical Company. Um, that's who made this. So they stamped it. But, um, you know, basically it's plastic with the metal. And, and just make sure it works. Keep your receipt. If it, doesn't, if it doesn't roll up easily, that's all I have to say about that. Take it back. If the gears look like they're stripping. Um, if your child can't roll it up easily, there you go. If um, you have, you know, you know, arthritis and it's not working, you know. Um, take it back. Now here, here's one here. The tight that caps on it. Let's just take aim it away. Now I'm going to just uh, turn it this way and just very gently pull it, pull it up. You don't have to go far. Okay, don't, don't get carried away. Um, there, like that. Just something like that. And these, this works really well. It, it keeps, it saves a lot of money. And paint works for all kinds of stuff, right? You can do it with your toothpaste too. And then of course everybody got to see. Um, you put these back, right? I'm going to just say that if you're liking, if you're interested in flowers, our, one of our January releases for our members is the, these tulips in the, in the vase. Those are roses, aren't Those they? Those are, sorry, roses. You're right. I really need that cataract <laughs> surgery, don't I'm I? I'm thinking in the eyes. Why. I'm, the, I'm you know? just thinking here. I don't know. I think that I do. And um, let's see. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just something you want, want to consider. And, again, we're going to be doing um, uh, the Van Gogh shoes uh, next week. That'll be the boots. That'll be the boots. Yeah, well, shoes, boots, yeah, okay. Boots, yeah. We're going to be doing those next week uh, on YouTube. That'll be next Tuesday while we're on uh, our Tuesday release on YouTube. And we'll have something else on Monday and Tuesday while we won't do live classes. And then we'll be back again the following week with live stuff. And listen, you guys, I hope you're subscribing to our channel. If you haven't done that, we really appreciate it. When you share our channel, others uh, help. it helps the search engine see us. 
So we appreciate it when you do that, and we appreciate your comments and your feedback. It really makes a difference. And we're a nice family of artists. What I love about YouTube is we're learning, you know, we have people from all over the world that we've gotten to know, and you guys are knowing them too. It's like a really neat community, isn't it? Kind of fun. There you go. Okay. All right, everyone, appreciate you joining us this evening. We will see you a week from Monday. We'll have it posted once we get it done, ready to post. Other than that, thank you for joining us. And again, like she said, subscribe, share, pass the word. Good night, everyone.